Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look at what is happening in the property market, what house prices are doing and whether they are rising or falling. Plus, with the Bank of England expected to raise interest rates once again, we'll touch on what impact this will have on the property market moving forward. Now, before I get into the video, please remember to like, share, and of course, subscribe to the channel. So it probably won't come as a surprise to many of you that the housing market is slowing and property prices have fallen from their peak. But with property prices still relatively high, there are mixed messages over the extent of the price reductions. If we take a look at the latest data from the land registry, you'll see a 1% month on month fall for February, taking the average UK house price to £287,506. Meanwhile, we have the more up to date stats from Rightmove, Halifax, and Nationwide showing a slight increase in property prices this spring. All this conflicting data raises the question. What is actually going on? Well, we know that since the pandemic and the accompanying stamp duty holiday, the property market has been pretty volatile. Data from Halifax, one of the largest lenders here in the UK, shows that property prices went up an unbelievable 20.4% between January 2020 and December 2022. This compares to growth of just 7.8% in the three years prior, from January 2017 to December 2019. Now, I like to use the Land Registry's UK House Price Index as the main data point for what's happening with house prices. The main reason being is that it's based on the actual property sales rather than asking prices. The downside, however, is it works on a two month lag. So the most recent figures are for February. Now the Land Registry reports that the average price of property in the UK rose by £16,000 between February 2022 and 2023, an increase of 5.5% year on year. Despite the annual figures showing a price rise, the numbers are falling month on month. They fell by 1% in February and 1.1% in January. Now, it's not just the land registry that we need to look at in terms of data. There are, of course, numerous other house price indices that we need to look at to build a better picture of what is going on. For example, there's Rightmove. The data that they provide is the most up-to-date. However, it's based on asking prices set by sellers rather than confirmed sales. We also, of course, have Nationwide and Halifax who publish their own monthly data, but their data is based on mortgage lending. Now, all three of these providers are currently reporting much lower price growth than the land registry reported year on year as shown in this table. All three had reported considerable price falls in recent months. All three had reported considerable price falls in recent months, with Halifax recording the biggest monthly fall down 4% for 14 years in November. Surprisingly, however, despite higher and uncertain interest rates, the price drops appear to be stalling, with Nationwide reporting a 0.5% increase in April after seven consecutive months of declining prices. Now, as we all know, the property market is a supply and demand game. So how many houses are actually being sold? Well, the number of purchases being reported each month is now actually much closer to the levels that we saw pre-pandemic. The most recent data from HMRC shows that an estimated 94,870 transactions went through in March a 14% yearly drop compared to March 2022, but a 26% increase compared with February 2023. Okay, so now we know what is happening with transactions. Is the property market actually slowing down? Well, it probably won't come as a surprise to many of you that with the uncertain interest rate environment, demand for property has fallen. A state agent trade body property mark reported that in March, 75% of property transactions were completed below the original asking price. That's the highest percentage that we have seen since January of 2020. And this is forecast to continue in the coming months as competition from buyers begins to dwindle. 
We also have property mark reporting a huge 71% fall in the average number of viewings per property between April and December of last year. And Rightmove in their March house price index reported that properties took an average of 57 days to sell in February. This is up from 32 days of May last year. Now, Taking all of this information into account, what is going to happen to house prices throughout the rest of 2023 and into 2024? Well, we still have a cost of living crisis, high inflation, high and rising interest rates, and a generally rocky economy. All of which is almost but certainly going to put some downward pressure and negatively impact the property market moving forward. How much will the property market be impacted really is the big question. Well, there are varying forecasts. We have estate agency Knight Frank forecasting a 5% drop. Capital Economics predicting a 12% drop by 2024. The Office for Budget Responsibility is expecting a 9% decrease between now and autumn 2024. And Rightmove is anticipating a very small 2% drop this year. So although the data appears to be a little bit all over the place and we have numerous and varying reports and predictions of where the property market will go, it is almost certain that the property market, if it doesn't fall, will at least stall. That being said, the property market is a supply and demand game. So at the minute, we seem to have limited supply, also limited demand because of interest rates. So as long as we all of a sudden do not have a spike in inventory and that supply shoot up, property prices should remain fairly stable with a slight leaning towards the downside because of interest rates, high inflation, and of course, the cost of living crisis continuing to strain people's finances. I really hope you found this video useful. If you did, remember to hit that like button, hit the share button, and of course, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.